this was the weather situation when we left the Azores. We had done quite a lot of uh, uh, tracking the developing weather scene and we could see that we were going to need to sail with a cold front coming up behind us. Uh, and we used predict wind over a series of days before we departed to look at the various routes. And we had a sort of rum line where we wanted to, to sail to Galicia. And we had several options in that about what we do on, on, on the route to try and lessen the impact. But we could see the developing pattern of the waves and the wind. And the biggest concern for us was the, the wave height and the frequency. So we, we left the Azores. It was a, a beautiful, uh, you know, beautiful place to leave. Uh, we'd had a fantastic time, lots of swimming, sunshine, nice and warm. And typical of the Azores, there was very little wind, so we, we set off with, with some motoring on calm seas. but we could see uh, on the weather tracking in that things were building up behind us. Uh, we could clearly see that there was uh, going to be rain showers uh, and the wind was building. We settled into our, our, our watch routine. Mm, Tom's special Indian rice soup. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for letting me do it. and we are doing three hours on, six hours off, and with three of us, that means you rate eight hours over the, over the, the five days of the crossing. So that's, that's pretty good, because you, you, know, you, you get different flavors of sunrise and sunset. And as the, the fronts came through, we had a lot of rain uh, coming in from the stern of the boat, and we put the, the cover down to create the snug. A snug is the like the little alcove near the fireplace, which is lovely and warm. <laughs> That's what we have here. This is our snug. <laughs> yeah, it is really cosy. It gave a sense of security and warmth to the boat. Um, and in that context, we know the cold front is coming. Uh, and that means for us, we're, we're taking down our flags and we're setting a preventer ahead of the time so that we've got less to do when the big winds come and the rain and the increased rolling. Uh, obviously with the waves there was a lot of rocking and that was increasing in frequency and that was really the most uncomfortable thing. It's not so much the wind, we, for the, in the strong winds we, were, we had the, just the genera up uh, and the boat was very comfortable sailing under those conditions. Uh, and it's easily in scope for, for, for what we can do. And the, the waves, you know, two and a half to maybe a bit more than that meters, with the rolling, the boat was, was comfortable in that. It was in the morning, early in the morning, just cloud cover, there was a lot of rain. The, you know, the big symptom of, of the cold front is the veer in the wind. It swings by 90 degrees, literally within a couple of minutes. Uh, which is what we had predicted and actually what the route we had proposed to do intended it to be. It, it certainly was a, a very dark place at night, uh, wet and you know quite noisy as well. That's the other thing you kind of forget. The, the waves were not coming from a single direction. They were coming from, you know, there's the primary swell and the secondary swell and they were, you know, up to 180 degrees apart at various times. Uh, and so effectively we had to jibe in the middle of the night. And once we were on that, that leg was actually much more comfortable. It was a better angle for the waves on the boat. Uh, and, you know, we were through the worst of it by then. And then the next day we were, you know, typical through a, a cold front. Uh, we had clearing skies and visibility was much better. Um, and the sea state though was very, very confused. And in that sense, this probably for me has been the, the leg where I've seen 
the most confused seas for the longest period of time. Those beautiful Atlantic smooth rollers which come in 10 to 12 seconds and we've only just started getting that in the last few hours really. The boat was, was comfortable in that. But now we're through all of that, we've got sunshine, we've got a, a good wave pattern, you know, 10 to 12 seconds, there are a couple of meters. The sea is quite good actually, it's starting to get bigger rolling waves. They're quite, quite big waves. Yeah, they're quite big, but, but they're, the timing is good, they're quite far apart, but really big ones. So, because if you look out there, I mean, now we're on the bottom. Yeah, I know. I was, and then you wait for a I was long time. By, Serial down here, and every so often you, you get this view as you came up. It was, <laughs> it was very, really good. And we can have a look at the weather. Up there. It's interesting. Yeah. So it's almost three meters waves, ten yeah. seconds. Ten second intervals, yeah. yeah. So ten so seconds what, what is. You can see out there. Yeah. And they are pretty, they're quite big. But they're very comfy. Yeah. So what do we learn? The frequency, not the height is the important yeah, thing. Yeah, frequency makes a big difference. So long waves, you want long ocean waves. How was on the loo? Perfect. Yeah. And what's cooking, Chef? Cooking. Oh, yes. cooking. What's cooking. Cooking, cooking is actually the same as yesterday. Oh, yes. Excellent. It's, it's uh, beef atlantique. Yes. Uh, yeah. I have to say, the beef was superbly tender. Yes. It melts in your mouth. <laughs> At least we have something to do here. Yeah. <laughs> holding holding still and eating yeah. beef atlantique. Well, it looks like dog food, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no. Sorry, I don't have any dogs. That's our trash, trash atlantique. And what some fruits it? left. That's raisins. Delicious. We had a lovely, nice sunny morning when the sun came up. Mm. Nice, and it warms up, warms up the uh, south side of the boat. The south side of the boat. Yeah, you just sit there and just. So that's that's the posh side, is uh, it? Well, no. You so you wanted the other side. Oh, you wanted the other hot. side. Ah. Yes. So port side. Port out, starboard home. Ah, not to, to, not to America, so that was it's the going India. To India. Ah, yes. So you wanted to have the shady side. Yes, correct. Yes, more money for the shady side. <laughs> <laughs> the other important thing is is to eat and drink. Make sure you, you, you know, you, you've got good food and you stay hydrated. And luckily we, we had a great selection of meals. While the boat is rolling, Tom is sorting all the sweets. Well, it's Atlantic inventory. Atlantic inventory. <laughs> you find any good surprises? Uh, yes. And uh, no peanuts. Too many. Oh, no peanuts? Too many raisins. Two of the mixed nuts. One of the salted nuts. Ooh. And one of the uh, filbers. Now, you'll notice that I do not believe in putting raisins in my mix because raisins do this they sweat <laughs> and therefore your nuts become soggy oh, very I like, good i like the mix of the nut and the raisin you do i do yeah nix mix <laughs> yeah and the ship tom's mix. nuts <laughs> <laughs> nix mix and Tom, tom's nuts thing about having Starlink allowed us to look at predict wind on the journey and that is a huge change compared with when we first did this crossing. Now we're, every day we've been tracking uh, using predict wind the, the, the weather forecast, the wave heights uh, and, and that has allowed us to modify en route the track we were making over a series of days. So, so there are pluses and minuses to it as I see it. There, there's huge advantages on this leg to being able to see that cold front and predict its course 
really accurately and for us to take relevant actions. But I also see that that's a disadvantage where everybody is watching us. It was great to be out alone, have to do the forecasts and living in that, if you like, the previous generation of sailing. And the, in some ways, things have been lost because you've got so much more up-to-date data. It's less of that unknown, unplanned adventure because you're constantly refining and retuning what you're doing on a daily basis. Uh, and then the other thing is that other people are watching us as well and they're looking at that wave data and wave frequency so the kind of the area of risk and concern is spread out and then using Starlink people are messaging us saying are you okay how is it going because they're seeing the data as well and that's a complete contrast to when we were out here effectively on our own uh, and and it was just us and we'd used much more of a long-range forecast to predict our our, our route. So it's a, a huge change in the past few years with, in terms of what the technology has brought to a, a trip like this.